right, what color to use, what color to use, um, yeah. All right, let's talk colors for a bit and how to pick them out. Howdy, howdy, this is Claire Lawrence. So a common question I get asked a lot is about colors and how to pick them out, uh, what colors go well together, things like that. Um, first thing first that I'm gonna talk about is sometimes you gotta see the colors. So something to keep in mind with, I know a lot of people are kind of like, I need all the colors and some get specific colors to match a certain thing from what they saw before or a certain project has laid out colors a certain way. Uh, whichever kind of individual, or if you're a mix of both, it doesn't really matter. This will work for both of you guys. And what it is, is about auditioning colors. And I've talked a little bit about this in the past. This is something that I believe in as far as visually seeing colors go together. Um, and this is just a simple thing that I do. And I know you've heard me talk about this too. Um, and that is what I'll do is I'll paint the top or the caps a certain color or, or the, the color of the bottle. And what this does is it really does allow me to put together grippings. Now I'm trying to do some warm tone or earthy tones in here with a little bit of a change up just for interest level. And I'm working on another tumbler. So I'm putting together some groups of colors that I'll go and paint the next tumbler with. And it's an easy way to figure out, you know, really quickly how my colors will work together as a grouping and how they won't work. Let me see if I can get the right angle here. All right, it helps when you can see the right color. All right, let me move. Okay, so the light over in my studio area is a lot better. Okay. So what I'm talking about here is it makes it easier for you to audition colors. For example, you know, these two particular greens right in here, uh, this one is more like an earthier, um, darker evergreen kind of color, whereas this one picks up a little bit on the, kind of has an ocean feel to it. And I'm going to talk in those kind of ways because every product has a different name for their you know, ocean blue color, and it may be a little bit different. So I don't want you to get hung up on the names of the colors for right now. But just look in terms of like, I want something that looks earthy like. New, uh, a lot of natural, neutral tones kind of thing here. So these three here kind of go in that direction, whereas this one gives me more of an ocean type of a feel to it. So I know that that one will go away. Well, I want to add a little bit of pizzazz to it. So I've got a nice little gold here that I'll add a little zing in there. Now, this here is a color that has a little bit of a color shifting property to it. And will that work in there? I think it's close enough that it can work. Um, and knowing how I'm gonna be using this, these particular colors, it may be one of those things that it might work a little bit, it might not. Or, let's see, maybe I can go with something that's a little bit more transparent. And this is a kind of a color shifting um, type of a glitter. It's almost like a glaze. So this would work too because it is more subtle, adds a little bit of sparkle bits to it. It works with these colors here. So they're kind of in that same family zone. Um, here's another good example here. Um, so I'm here, I'm picking out some pink tones, just having fun with it. One little pop of white in there. And here, this is another one of those color shifting things. It goes from a purple to a blue. So I'm actually introducing blue, which will be a little bit of a contrast, and so will that. But it, to me, it plays with texture a little bit in this case. Like I've got these colors here, which are almost, almost transparent. And then this one here is more of an opaque. However, this one has a little bit of a shimmer quality like a pearlescent but it's a color shifting color whereas these are solid colors here here and here and so I've got solids I've got a little bit of a pearl but shift and then I've also got a little bit of a sparkle so it kind of mixes it up for me and that's what I'm looking for so I'm happy with that all right so you can start to feel like 
here's a, a blue collection. Maybe I'm going for that oceany kind of color uh, feel to it. And I can bring in that other one that was, I was thinking, hmm, that might be a little bit too oceany. Now looking at these colors together, these two here are really, really close. So, but it's also kind of close to this. So just by eliminating this, now you have a little bit of a step. Now granted, this isn't exactly the same blue family, but these would all get along very well together in an ocean kind of four. And I've got these two here, which are glitters. This one is one of those, it says everything in the kitchen sink kind of glitter form. Um, and then this is, I believe, another one of the blue, uh, red, violet, blue shift. So it's gonna introduce a little bit of red in there. I don't know, but I think there's already a lot of blue in there, so that would be almost like a contrasting glitter. I could incorporate a white with my bottle that just fell down here. And that would be very pleasing to the eye. If you wanted to keep it even simpler and reduce down your colors, you could start looking at your color shades and it's like these two are kind of close together. I kind of like, you know, do I want to go that direction? Or do I want to go ahead and, and I kind of do want to go that direction. So I just reduced it down by one. Either way, that's kind of how I play with it. And you can see how it's really, really helpful to have the tops on there. Because I know that when you're looking at all the colors, it's like, how am I going to put these colors together? Another way to help you out with this, there's... um color picks that you can choose online and I'll see if I can get some links and put them at the bottom of this uh, this video where you can go through and if you have different pictures and then they pull colors out of the pictures and so you have a collection of colors to choose from so that can help you get started and I encourage you to get started with that because I don't want you to get tied up in like say you put a color collection of these colors here and it's like oh I don't have exactly those colors but maybe you have something that's similar and would work out just fine well that really came out blue <laughs> it's, it's a little it's closer to this color believe it or not let's see if I can mm. okay that is not a good example on camera let's try something else okay all right, that's a little closer. So uh, say you have that at home, then that might work out just fine. So be open to colors that are similar. They don't have to match exactly. As long as you have kind of a breakdown as far as a plan to go from, that is the first thing. The second thing is get a good visual of what you're dealing with colors wise. That will help you out too. Um, another tip as far as a, an easy way to pick out colors is something that comes from my, my quilting background. And unfortunately, I have mostly hand, hand dyes around my place. But if you have a little section of fabric, like, oh, the fabric store, even if you don't quilt, even if you don't do anything with fabrics or anything like that, it's a great way of having color combinations. And you can just, like, throw them in a folder or something like that near you. And just get a little sample bit of fabric and you're like, okay, I like the tone on tone look of this. And I can pick out like a deeper, you know, green there. I could pick out a like bright kind of greenish yellow there. And I like these blues with it. So even like just sticking in that zone there, you know, that can look kind of pretty, you know. Or even working like I really want it to be subtle and these are really close together. Um, the cool thing about this one is you keep opening it up. It's like, oh, more choices. And I can keep opening it up again, even more. But you see what I mean there? But if you also, I mean, here's another one. I like my purples and reds and things like that. And this has a great way of doing this. And if you want to see another color with it, like I want some contrast in there, get something that's white. Put it next to it, and then you can see like a little segment of it. And if you're having a hard time seeing that, 
grab something. I happen to have sandpaper close by. So I'm just showing you that it doesn't matter what you use. Just use what you got. And you can see, okay, those are the colors I want to work with. I've got a green there, the violet there, a little bit of white, and it's kind of going black. Yeah, I like that bit. And that's your inspiration to pick colors from. Um, here's another fabric I've got here. And this works with a lot of people who like oceans and things like that. So you can go with things that are like a gold tone, or you can think of this as white, and you've got a couple different shades of blues here. So you got something to work from. So if this was in your fabric stash, um, in your little folder there, you can always pull that out, okay? Another way of doing this is if you look at it and you're having a hard time picking out the colors, let your eyes go out of focus. And whatever colors pop out the most to you, pick four or five colors. No more than five, especially if you're having a hard time with colors. But I would say four. And make sure one of them is at least contrasty, like, like the white here. Excuse me. Uh, the white here. And you've got a dark color here. And picking two different mid-tone colors. And that's usually a good ace to choose from. And again... Let's see if I can do this. I might have to, I'm gonna work this out here. <laughs> I'm gonna MacGyver this somehow, maybe. Okay, bear with me for a second. Do, 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 do. There's my little hold music. Hold please. Okay. So even just like the, the little tie there gives you an idea of your colors. So you got a really, really super dark navy blue. You got a mid middle kind of blue and a white. Maybe possibly even a bright, bright green in there. Or a really super bright blue. So that gives you an idea of how to do color really easy. And you've got a phone and most likely you've got a camera. And you can take pictures of things around that are like, ooh, I like that. And highlight the colors that are in there that you're interested in. And that is also another way of working out with colors. But again, when you go back to laying them out, no matter if they're acrylics or resin paints, you have something to go from really quickly on whether it's an opaque, a transparent, something shimmery, like so. Okay? So, get to having fun. And don't be afraid of the colors. If you're afraid of the colors, start here and start here. Or check out the websites that I'm going to list down below. All right. Later, y'all. I also wanted to throw this in midway. So the colors that I'm using here, I'm okay with them being similar colors with a contrast pop and the metallic and the reason for that is is this is how i'm applying these colors so this is the next project is to get another tumbler and the base is going to be the painted background like you see there so it's similar colors there's a contrast in there and there's i believe a gold in there too and then i i do a white and a gold over top of it so it shines through and they both play really, really well together. So that's the plan. And once I have it worked out well, having the two layers just really make this thing turn out fabulous. Can you tell I really like the cup? I really like the cup. In fact, I like the cup so much, I'm going to do some more. <laughs> All right, so don't be afraid of your colors. I'm going to put another little snippet in here too. Okay, so this is just giving you an example of why it's really, really helpful to color the top here. So this is an extreme sheen. It's just an acrylic paint that uh, my buddy Tish has shown me. And it comes already with a little, you know, pre-printed label, which is nice. It shows me generally the color. However, sometimes when there's a particular property on the hair, like a shimmer or a glitter or it's a solid or even a transparent, it's hard to show those in printed labels. Uh, they can print like the color, but they can't really give you what the color truly feels. They, tr they try. 
And sometimes they try to print them out on like holographic or a glittery type of uh, paper. But this is the same color with it, with the actual paint on there. So you actually get some of the little sh uh, shimmer on there, kind of a pearlescent. It's not, it's a little bit different, but you notice the colors haven't changed, but you can see the property of the paint. And that's important when you're talking about, like, like I was talking about different, like transparency solids, or, you know, you want to have pearlescence or metallics and things like that. So that's why I still even paint over top of the labels. Wanted to show that with you. All right, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. Definitely hit the bell to get notified. Next time I put a video up, you never know what I'm gonna put up next. Sometimes inspiration happens at a moment's notice. This was not in the plan today. <laughs> okay, also check my links below for my Amazon shop for links of different products I use. So they're all together in one location. Um, and also any colors I use for my resin, I get them from Artist Till Death, and there's a coupon code below for that too. There you go.